shut down everything so we can look unto the hills as a world from whence cometh our help. Our help, Bethel, comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let's do it again, everybody. Our God reigns. Our God reigns in majesty. He reigns with authority. He reigns, Almighty One. He reigns, Almighty One. He reigns, God's only Son. He reigns, God's only Son. He reigns forevermore. He reigns forevermore. He reigns, come and adore. He reigns, come and adore. He reigns, Hail Prince of Peace. He reigns, Hail Prince of Peace. All praise belongs to Him. All praise belongs to Him. He reigns forevermore. He reigns forevermore.
Hallelujah. He reigns. Ooh. Hallelujah. There's no God like Jehovah. Yes, hallelujah. Woo! He reigns. He's yes. the only living God. Hallelujah. He's the only living God. Yes. He's the all-wise God. He's the all-powerful God. Yes. He reigns. He reigns. Hallelujah. He reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't stop praising him, Bethel. He reigns. I need you to know he reigns yes. over your situations. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. Woo! Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reign. Jesus reign. Yes. Yes. Woo! Reign. Jesus.
It's reserved for you, Lord. That means that there's nobody else who deserves the glory like you. And so we lift our hands in the sanctuary today. And we say we worship you, Lord. We give you all the honor and all the praise. For indeed, he is worship, worthy of our worship. Can I get a witness? Is he worthy of your worship? Come on, has he done anything for you? Did he wake you up this morning? Didn't he clothe you in your right mind? Didn't he give you a measure of health and strength? Indeed, our God is worthy. And we want to give him all the glory today. Psalm 145 says, I will extol thee, my God, O King. And I will bless his name forever and ever. Every day I will bless thee. And I will praise thy name forever and ever. Verse 3 says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. From one generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works. I will extol thee. Did you come to extol him this morning? See, extol means not just to praise, but to highly praise. It, it doesn't just mean to praise, but to enthusiastically praise. It's to give him an extravagant praise. And those of you who are sports fans like me, when you watch the Super Bowl and you see a touchdown, you get excited. When you watch basketball and you see Steph Curry hit a three-pointer, some people all over the place raising their hand and making noise. But today, we have come to worship, to enthusiastically worship the Lord of Lords, not man, the King of Kings. And we've come to give him not some, but all the glory. Have you come to give him the glory? Amen. Indeed, he's worthy to be praised. You can be seated. As we ask Reverend Pat Bethel to prepare to lead us in prayer. But as you, as you pray, let's remember how good God's been to us. Let's consider what's happening all over the world, especially in Ukraine, where we see that they're under siege. And let's give God thanks for this opportunity to worship. No, we just sang. He's the king of Zion. Judah's lion. Reign, Jesus, reign. You know, the Bible says Satan is as a roaring lion. 
But we have Judas lion. We have the real lion. So don't let's forget who reigns. God reigns in every situation. So we thank God this morning for this opportunity to just give him praise and honor and glory. Could we just sing one verse of all the glory? Father, we say thank you that you have eyes. Your Bible says you don't slumber, nor do you sleep. And so, God, as we come this morning, we bring your people to you, Lord God. And first of all, Lord, we ask you to forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, for our sins. Forgive us, oh Lord, for all of our transgressions. Blot them out, Lord, and create in us clean hearts and renew a right spirit within us, Lord God. Father, your word says when we come to worship, if there's anyone that has ought against us, we are to leave our gifts and go reconcile with our brothers, and then we can come and offer our gifts to you. So, Father, we come today offering ourselves as living sacrifices, and we pray that you will find us holy and acceptable to you, oh, Lord God. And so, Father God, we say thank you again for the opportunity, oh, Lord God, where we can come and love on one another, we can come and appreciate one another. 
become as one body, Lord of Christ. Become as one body. Your word says all of the parts have to fit together. We have to become one, Lord God. And we can only do it, Lord, when we unify and when we can do it through love. And so we say thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be able to come together in a worship ceremony. Now, Lord, we bring to you our speaker. She is the one, oh Lord, who's given the privilege this morning to be an oracle for you. And so, Father, we pray that your anointing flows from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord God. Strengthen her as she impart whatever it is that you've given us for this hour, Lord. We come, Lord, waiting to hear from you. We come to become refreshed, oh Lord God. We become energized, Lord, and your word is what does it. So we thank you, oh Lord, for the speaker this morning. And then we come with those who've come, Lord, with heavy hearts. So many, so many, so many. So many have come, Lord. They've had bereavement in their families on all kinds of situations. Some of them have had murder, Lord God, and other things that have happened. But God, you are the God of all comfort. And we ask you to comfort your people this morning, Lord God, wherever they may be in, whatever situation they may be in. And then, Lord, there are other needs, financial needs, oh, Lord God, and spiritual needs and emotional needs. But your God has promised, you, God, have promised to supply every need that we have today. And so, Father God, take charge of this service. Do as you please in this service. Go from the pulpit to the door, Lord God, and touch each heart. You know what each person needs, oh, Lord God, before they even say it. And we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. We pray now, Lord God, for those people in the Ukraine, Lord, who are at war, Lord, fighting against, oh, Lord, a person who has no conscience, a person, oh, Lord, who is not spiritually involved in anything. He can do whatever he wants or thinks he can do whatever he wants. There is no mercy, Lord, and he's prepared to sit on his throne and stamp on people and pull them down. But God, I come in the name of Jesus, saying to release those people, oh Lord, from the bondage that he's trying to put them in, Lord God. Take him off his throne, Lord God. Let him know that you are Judah's lion. You are the king of Zion, and you reign over every situation. And so, Father, we pray for them and people that are oppressed everywhere, Lord. We pray for them right now that they may be released from the herons and the pharaohs and the pollens of this world. Thank you, O oh Lord, for what you're going to do. And now, Lord God, we pray and, and ask you, O oh Lord God, to lighten us, Lord God, lighten the loads that we're carrying. God, we say thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. So rise. say praise the Lord. Come on, say thank you, Jesus. I'll wake up and say glory to God. I turn to your neighbor and say, you're six feet away, but I've come to worship. I hope you've come to worship too. Amen. You could even say that social distancing. We're social distancing, but we're praising the Lord. We're now going to call on Sister Theresa McQuay, who will read our first reading for the day, the Old Testament reading. Good morning, church. Our scripture comes from the book of Psalm, the 99th Psalm, and it reads as follows. The Lord reigns, let the people tremble. He dwells between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. 
the Lord is great in Zion. And he is high above all the people. Let them praise your great and awesome name. He is holy. The Lord's strength also loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice. And righteousness is in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. And worship in his holy footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. And Samuel was among those who called upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them in the cloudy pillows. They kept his testimonies and the ordinance he gave them. You answered them, O Lord, our God. You were to them God who forgives. Though you took vengeance on their deeds, exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. The word of the Lord, people. Somebody say he reigns. Somebody say he reigns. For him to reign in your life means that you have to give up control. He has to have full authority in your life. He has to sit on the throne of your life. And he has to be king. Is he king today? As we examine ourselves, we have to put him as number one. He has to be preeminent in order to reign. And if he reigns in our lives, then we know he is in complete control. We're going to now ask Reverend A. DeWitt Hutchinson to come and welcome our visitors, both those in the sanctuary and those who are viewing via Facebook, who are live streaming, uh, and those who will watch this on YouTube. Reverend A. DeWitt. Good morning to all. To those of you here in the sanctuary, we say welcome. To those of you who are watching by the various means aforementioned, we say welcome. We are worshiping in the oldest Baptist church in the Bahamas, 232 years August coming, and we are the oldest continuing Baptist congregation in the Caribbean. We bless God because we are a people who know what God can do. We are people who have trusted God and tried God, and we believe that our God is holy. On behalf of our moderator, Ishmael Lightburn, our ministerial caucus, the entire leadership and membership of Bethel, we say God bless you, we love you. Prepare your heart to hear the word and to participate in fellowship. God bless you. Okay, amen to that. We have now come to the portion of the service that everybody can participate in. And so we ask our ushers to prepare, even as we ask Deacon, Deaconess Allison uh, Miller to prepare to do the offertory prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We are reminded that giving is indeed an act of worship. So we worship you in this way, Father. We present our best to you. We say, let it be done for the building up of your kingdom here on earth. We give humbly, we give cheerfully. Amen. If you'd like to give to this ministry, there are four opportunities for you to give. One, you can give to us through our Royal Bank of Canada account, our main branch account. The account number 2895688 or through our Bank of the Bahamas account. The main branch again, branch code 
account number 135-000-1435. Otherwise, you can give through an internal transfer if you have a Royal Bank account or a Bank of the Bahamas account, a bank-to-bank -bank transfer if you have online banking from another institution, or over-the-counter if you happen to be in one of those institutions and would like to make a deposit over the counter. Or if you'd like, you can simply go to our website, Historic Bethel Baptist, and click on our Give button. That will give you an opportunity to give via credit or debit card. And you can specify exactly which ministry you would like to give funds to so that we can direct those funds accordingly. God bless you.
on, let's give God some praise. Giants die. Giants die. But they only die when you praise. They only die when you worship. They only die when you lift up the name of Jesus. That's when they die. So if you want to kill some giants in your life, the giant of depression, the giant of addiction, if you want to kill some giants, what do you need to do? Just praise. Just praise. Amen. And if you praise, they say, they got to come down. They got to come down, Reverend Pat. When you worship, they got to come down. They may not want to come down, but they got to come down. The power of God, because he reigns. If you worship, the giants are going to come down. Just like David, get the slingshot and be able to defeat those giants in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, we are going to call Sister Davina Brista. Come on with our New Testament reading for the day, which comes from Luke chapter 7, verses 1 to 10. Our New Testament reading. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you praise. <laughs> when you praise. Good morning, church. The scripture lesson is taken from Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. Now, when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant who was there unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and he had built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them. And when he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself. For I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. But say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I am also a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And they that were sent returning to the house found the servant whole that had been sick. Here ends the reading. Today I want to say just a few words to introduce our speaker. And she reminded me, just a couple I have known Reverend Levette McFall since the early 80s when I joined the youth choir under the directorship of Reverend Pat. And her roots go deep in this church. Her grandmother, Mother Ophelia Forbes, the late Ophelia Forbes, and of course her mother, her late mother, Mother Maxine Adley were staples in this congregation. She was educated out east, and so she is an alum of the Big Red Machine. I know I was going to have one of them somewhere in here. <laughs> and she also attended and graduated from Acadia in Nova Scotia, Canada. Now, she ain't tell me none of this. This is just some stuff that I know from being around her. 
I've watched her over the years, and I've seen God transform her into the woman that she is today. She is a matured, a passionate, and a faithful woman of God. And when I say faithful, I mean she is dedicated to whatever she does. She don't do things halfway. If she can do it, she all in. She is gifted in the area of organization. If you want something organized and done properly, you put it in her hands. She is thorough in what she does. I've seen her grow and mature and have so much influence over the lives of so many folk over the years. She is indeed an anointed speaker, preacher, and she is all over the place preaching all the time, everywhere you could get her, especially on the family islands, it seems. They just love her. I speak after watching her and knowing her and having collaborated with her over so many years. I am glad to say that she is my sister and my friend. And so I want you to just point your hand toward her and say, Lord, speak to her and through her in Jesus' name. The praise team will come and minister, and the next voice you will hear will be that of our speaker for the day, the Reverend Levette Matfor. The question is when you're standing at a crossroads. What do you do when a fork is in the road? What do you do when the world is on your shoulder? What do you do when your back's against the wall? What do you do? Hold on. Keep the faith. The question is when you're standing at a cross. What do you do when a fork is in the road? What do you do when the world is on your shoulders? What do you do when your back's against the wall? Nowhere else to look Where do you turn? 
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Let's bless the Lord in the house. Come on, if you know he's worked it out before in your life and you know that he is God all by himself, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if you got history that he brought you out, you know that he's able to bring you out again. Come on, somebody. Bless the name of the Lord God in this house. We praise you, Lord God. We magnify you. We lift you up. For your name is great. You are mighty. You are faithful. There is no God like Jehovah. Awesome wonder you are. And we have come this morning to bless your name. We've come to magnify your name. We've come to worship your name. We've come to lift you up, oh God. For you are indeed God alone. And so we love you and we praise you and we worship you. Come on one more time for the Spirit of the Lord God in the place for where the Spirit of the Lord God. There is ha, liberty. I, my God, from Zion. I tell you, I don't know if anybody's sick this morning, but I dare you to take your hand and lay it on your body and say, sickness, go. Let that mountain know that your God is a healer. I don't know if you're in a hospital bed today, but you want to lay your hand on yourself and say the bomb of Gilead is in the house and he has come to heal me. I don't know if your head is bowed down, but our God is a head lifter. He is a way maker. He is a miracle worker. He is a promise keeper. He's my light in my darkness. And somebody, even when I don't see him working, I know he's working it out. He's working it out for my good. Hallelujah. You can be seated in the house of the Lord. God, I just want to give God thanks and praise for another opportunity to stand behind this sacred altar to lift up the King of kings and indeed the Lord of lords. I come not in my own strength, but I come in the strength of the Lord God. I come not with my own words, but I come with the word of the Lord God today. For the Lord, for the word of the Lord is a strong, 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 strong tower. Because it's the name of the Lord God, Jesus. He is able to do everything, everything we need. Bethel, the spirit of the Lord is in this place. I reverence him. I feel him all over my body. I feel his presence so strong today. And I don't know about you, but I just feel like I need to just reverence him just a little bit more. Because when I couldn't keep myself on last night and when I couldn't wake myself up this morning, he woke me up. He started me on my way and he clothed me in my right mind. And so I bless him. For in him I live, in him I move, and in him I have my BC. You don't have to worry what folk think when you know what the Lord has done for you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you, Bethel. I feel revival in the air. And I know that our God is up to something great. When 2022 came in, I felt a thickness in the spirit realm. And I said, God, I don't know what you're about to do, but I know that you're about to move by your spirit and in your power. And I believe that signs and wonders are going to be manifested among the people of God. You got to watch what you speak in this season. Because as soon as it come out of your mouth, because the I am that I am resides inside of you, the power of the Lord God is the I am. And when you speak, you trigger the I am. You trigger the power of God. And when the power of God go forth, nothing can remain the same. And so Bethel, I encourage you to walk in the I am power. I encourage you to live in the I am power, to operate as the I am 
have anointed you to operate. Touch yourself and say, I am anointed. Touch yourself and say, I am armed. And I'm dangerous. I'm dangerous to the enemy's kingdom. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I beg, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this sacred moment. God, I believe that you've given me a word. So God, help me to deliver it speedily and with power that some soul may cry out. I yield, I yield, I cannot longer live in my sinful state. Whether they're at home, on the car, in the car, whether in the kitchen, in the hospital, in the prison, God, or even in this church. Move, Lord God. Set the captive free, Lord God. Oh, God, heal the brokenhearted. Huh? Men, Lord God, those, oh God, who have been divided and separated. And God, mend the broken pieces. And we thank you. We give you praise in advance in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. I just want to quickly, 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 don't want to lighten the thickness of the spirit in the place. I just want to quickly say I thank God for our moderator. I thank God for my colleagues. I thank God for Deacon Roll and that short, long introduction. Uh -huh. I thank God for the praise team and the, my God, from Zion and the musicians. And I thank God for all of you, Reverend Patrick, everybody in your rightful places. Let's get to the word quickly, quickly. Time is moving speedily. And the word of the Lord God comes from 1 Samuel chapter 15. I'm going to skip through it because of time. Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you king over his people Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord, the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came up from Egypt. Now go, attack the Amalekites and totally destroy everything that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep. Camels and donkeys. Then Saul, verse 7, attacked the Amalekites all the way from Havilah to Shur to the east of Egypt. He took a guy, king of the Amalekites, alive. Watch it now. And all his people he totally destroyed with the sword. But Saul and the army spared a guy. And the best of the sheep and cattle, the fat calves and lambs, everything that was good. These they were unwilling to destroy completely. But everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. You better watch out for folk who like walk on weak people. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. He said, I'm grieved that I have made Saul king. Don't let God be grieved over you. Because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was troubled and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Watch it now. We go into verse 13. So here Samuel goes and he meets Saul. And when Samuel reached him, Saul said, what Saul? The Lord bless you. I could see him now in all his regalia. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. But Samuel said, what then is this bleating of sheep? 
kicking my ass. What is this lowing of cattle that I hear? Saul answered, the soldiers, huh, them from the abroad, them from the Amalekites. They, the soldiers now, he's the king, spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God. But we totally destroyed the rest. We're moving quickly. We're going to move to verse 22. But Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice. It's better than the worship we had in here this morning. To obey and to heed is better than the fat of rams. For rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because, Saul, you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has rejected you. Tell somebody obedience is God's standard. Obedience is God's standard for me. Obedience is God's standard for his church. Read this verse in the message. Then Samuel said, do you think all God wants are sacrifices? Empty rituals just for show? He wants you to listen to him. Plain listening is the thing, not staging a lavish religious production. Not doing what God tells you is far worse than fooling around in the occult. My God from Zion. So we think witchcraft bad? No, disobedience, he's saying. Getting self-important around God is far worse than making deals with your dead ancestors. Because you said no to God's command. He says no to your kingship. Because we refuse to obey God. God ain't gonna listen to our prayers. Because we refuse to obey God. God ain't want our worship. Who shall stand in the hills of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. You wonder why every time you see me offend somebody, I quick to what? Apologize. Tell somebody, you better apologize. God require it of us. He said, when somebody do ought against you, or you ought against somebody, if you better forget them. Come on, church. Is God going to move by signs and wonders and miracles? First of all, we got to obey him. So obedience is God's standard. It is God's requirement. It is God's way and no other way. The sovereign, all-sufficient, self-existing, all-powerful God is not going to compromise his standard. Come on, somebody. He says what he means, and he means what he says. His word is absolute. It's final. It's fixed. It cannot be changed, and it cannot be thwarted. If God said it, too bad who don't like it. If God said it, you can. Heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of the Lord, his word, whatever he says, whatever he commands, whatever God Decides will stand forever. People of God, we might as well throw our hand up and say, I surrender, God. It's your way and no other way. I don't care how we maneuver it. 
I don't care how we manipulate it. I don't care what we try to do about it. When God bless you, no devil in hell can curse you. For whom the Lord bless is blessed. And whom he curse. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 to 20. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Don't get mad with folk who bless. Don't get mad when folk getting un uh, promoted and appointed. Nothing can happen without the will of God. When Hutch, when Job, hey, yeah, 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 when, when the devil went after Job, Reverend Hutch preached it powerfully on yesterday, the devil couldn't touch Job until God gave him permission. Why are you, look here, worrying about the devil? The devil can't do you nothing. What God ain't equipped you to handle, if he takes you to it, he'll bring you. Through it. He promised to protect you. He promised to keep you. He promised. We're a cafe. Witchcraft can't touch you because the greater God is inside of you. When folk put up their leg to trip you down, they got. Bethel we saved when we in the hands of the Lord. Our pastor used to say when it came to the senior saints, and sometimes we would get worried about them because some of them would get forgetful and some of them would go through dementia. And some of them, you know, it ain't the person you knew. And I remember one time he said to me, he said, Rev, when they in God's hands, ain't no dementia, ain't no forgetfulness, ain't nothing could pluck them up out of God's hand. You are in the Father's hands. And he got it right. You got to know your state, your identity. You got to know your position. You got to know your posture. Postured in the master's will. and Postured for his use. and Postured for his anointing to use you. He'll call you from the back pew. Drag you. He ain't no respect a person, y'all. I don't know why we believe we got to try to determine how we can make God do what we want him to. You know, if we spend more time doing what God want us to do, the country would be a better place. Eugene Peterson in the message translation says it like this. As Jesus was explaining to his disciples about those that will enter, watch it now, the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 21, he says, knowing the correct password, that the, red, the correct hallelujah and praise the Lord. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Saying, master, master, for instance, isn't going to get you anywhere with me, says God. What I require is serious obedience. And then he defined obedience. He says, it is doing what my father wills. You see the man on the road and God say stop and bless the man. But you too busy rushing along. 
And you don't know why God wanted you to stop. You just gone on your merry way. That is disobedience. When God said to you, get up and pray for the deaconess, the evangelist, the senior saints, the children, get up. My sister, get up. My brother, you tell God you too sleepy. You too tired. And you go back to sleep. That is this O P T. And you wonder why the church having trouble? It's a call, my brothers and sisters, to obedience. Our God is a giving God. The Bible says in John 3 and 16, I was so glad when Amaya had this memory verse for her memory verse that week because I didn't have to push her to know that one. It says, for God so loved, he's a given God, the world that he gave, his best, his only begotten son. He only asked us to help our neighbor. He only asked us to take care of those who are hungry. He only asked us to visit the prisoner. He only asked us to look after this. God gave his best, his son, only begotten son. And this same son, he promised us that if we call upon him, he will answer it. We call upon him. He will show up if we call upon the name of Jesus. Things will happen. It's a call to obedience. Everybody knows in Deuteronomy chapter 28 that it's the hallmark chapter of the ifs and thens of obedience. The whole first half of the chapter is pressed down, shaken together, and running over with blessings as a result of obedience. If you fully obey the Lord your God, the Bible says, and carefully, watchfully, in a posture of humility, keep his commandments, all it says, all his commandments. You then will be blessed. Like we to say, in the city, in the field, in our going out, and in our coming. But there is an if, and then a then. Just because we say we bless in the city, and I bless in the field, and I bless in my going out, and my, I bless, that does not mean you have the blessings of the Lord if you are not walking in obedience. My brothers and sisters, I quick to fall on my face and cry out to God. I quick to acknowledge my wrong. I quick to call my brother or sister aside who I may offend and say, I love you, forgive me, because I need the blessings of a God who blesses. And no man, throw your hand up and say, God, I surrender. Forgive me, God. I need you to bless my life. So do a work inside of me so that I can be all that you have called and ordained me to be. We call that an activation moment where you ain't got to wait to leave church to do it. I come to the place now when folks say, pray for me. I just pray now because child, I get, I over 50. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because don't sense in me saying, I can pray for you. And the, oh, my God, from the devil can make sure I forget. So if I only say, Lord, Deacon Stephen Thompson was doing a little ritual with us about two Saturdays ago where he said, just a one-liner. I call him, I say, buddy, I love that. Because we were able to cover so many people. Just a one line. Bless Deaconess Natasha. Bless Deaconess Keisha. Bless. Yeah, yeah. Just a one liner. But if you say it, be obedient to what you say, Bethel. Bethel, God is doing something great among us. 
but he only is asking for our obedience. Don't let no devil in hell. My brothers and sisters, I came by just to let you know that partial obedience is the same as disobedience. That a half truth is still a lie. The Bible says a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So if you know you don't like the sister's shoes, but you tell her her dress look good, you still lie. That's half truth. So you know it does a lie for us. You imagine what God receives. And, oh God, I love you. Oh God, I w and listen, our hearts so far from Him. Our hearts cooking peas and rice and chicken. Our hearts cooking guava duff. Our hearts doing all kind of things, but our lips moving and we. Oh, you can't. You can fool man, but y'all, we can't fool God. He said hi, but he's a God who look low. It's better to be honest than to be deceptive. There's no half stepping with God, Bethel and friends. In fact, Jesus emphatically says to the church of Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3, which we are we're on in Bible study, he says, I know all the things you do that you are neither hot nor cold, I wish that you were one or the other, but since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot, that means fully in me, or cold, able where my gospel could reach you, I will spit you out of my mouth. Reverend Hutchinson did an awesome teaching on what that vomiting out of God's mouth is. There is no discussing or arguing with God when he tells you to do something. Like Amaya liked to try to make her point. And y'all who got children of this age, oh, they believe they got to have the last say. But when it comes to God, when he say it, I said, I don't get to say with God, how come I, it was in that accident? I mean, he could say it. But that ain't, got, that ain't moving God. God said, because I was trying to possess you with that car. You think that car is your God? So I had to, Take my hand off you for a minute. Yeah. Now you in that action, you scream, Jesus! Yeah. COVID? Shut down everything so we can look unto the hills as a world from whence coming our help. Our help, Bethel, comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Folk taught when Pastor Gordon Bees could fall up. God, church, we love our pastor, and God knows there ain't no boy. Look here, you all have to fight with me to say how much you love him. But guess what? This God house, these God people, pastor would be disappointed with us if we were not moving forward. Get up, Bethel! Cross over the Jordan. But you can't cross unless you step your foot in the water. The water ain't a part till you step your foot in. But when you step in the water, the water got to obey the command of the God in you. And he will clear the path even though it look like it going to drown you. Even though it look like it going to overtake us. He say step, step. He say stay, stay. He say pray. He say open your mouth. He say bow down. He say stand up. And we will see the miracle hand of God move, move all over this sanctuary all through this community, all down Hospital Lane, all down Nassau Street, all over. I had a vision 
three times in a row before a pastor died. In fact, I thought it had to do with his elevation to the presidency. It was a vision where I saw pastor was going up in the sky and he had a white long rope. And the rope flowed down. And I was standing where in midair because I could see everything that was happening. I was looking up at him and when I looked down all over Meeting Street, all down that way, Bethel Yard, the back was, I mean, people was everywhere. But the people were dressed in white. They were looking up in astonishment. Like, where you think this man think he going? And the Lord brought that vision back to me three times. I thought it had to do with the presidency. I said, Pastor, God put the presidency in your hand. Don't care what nobody say. If they say, yeah, they can do you, you know, like you know who. But I say, Pastor, God put the presidency in your hand. And after Pastor died, I saw the vision again. And I realized it was the Lord taking Pastor. And we were standing looking. And it reminded me of the scripture when Jesus was ascending back to heaven. And the disciples were standing, gazing up, and the Bible says, the angels asked him, why are you standing here gazing? And y'all got work to do? Bethel, we got work to do. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, baptizing them in the name of the Son, baptizing them in the name of the Holy Ghost. And the beauty of it is Pastor God. But he says, Lo, I am that I am. The great God of wonder, the all-sufficient God, the God who is able to speak and things live and things die. The God who sees all things, knows all things, is all-powerful, is with us. We could do this. We could do this, God. We could do this. We could say but we got to come together and agree. Get in a meeting with the person. Understand what's going on. Let's put our hands together. Foot to the ankle, ankle to the leg, leg to the knee, knee to the... And let's move as a mighty great army battle. Come on, y'all. Somebody stand to your feet. Tell them we on the move. Tell that devil we on the move. We walking in obedience. We talking in obedience. We can be in obedience. I don't care what happened. I don't tell somebody that over. That finish. God can guide us through the working it out. Tell somebody. What we see manifested is thy kingdom come on earth as it is already done. Tell somebody it's done, man. It's done. Let's support each other. Let's stop the confusion. Let's stop the division. Let's stop the undermining. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Let's do it God bless you. Let us bow our heads at this time as we consider the words of the Lord God today. The word of the Lord today for us is obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen? That's, that's the word. And as we think about the original text that was read in our hearing this morning, it was about a centurion who needed prayers. And he made an interesting statement. He said, I am a person in leadership, 
And I say to my servants, go and they go and come and they come. As we bow our heads and close our eyes at this time and we think and contemplate. In that particular example, guess who we are? We're not the one who says go. And we're not the one who says come. We are the ones who when God says go, our job is to go. Amen? And when God says come, it is our job to come. So we are the servants in that example. Brothers and sisters, Obedience is better than sacrifice. I know that God has given unto each and every one of us the ability to rationalize and think for ourselves. Sometimes that's good and sometimes that's not so good. Because sometimes it causes us to ignore our instructions. And sometimes it causes us to do our own thing. But again, as our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, I want to ask us, are we satisfied that we are obedient? Even when obedience means we may not be able to sacrifice. God wants us to respond to his instructions. And so this morning, I would like those of us, in fact, I would like all of us, to recommit ourselves to being servants of God. To recommit ourselves to being servants of the King of Kings and servants of the Lord of Lords. Even when sometimes we do not understand what he is saying or why he is saying it, once we know what he's saying, I want us to be recommitted to following the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of us right now are ready to make that commitment? I will go where he sends me. I will follow wherever he leads me. I will do whatever he asks of me, even when sometimes I don't understand. If that's our commitment this morning, if that's our commitment today, let us pray together these simple words. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to me today. I am your servant. Speak to me, and I will go. Speak to me, and I will do. Speak to me, and I will yield. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray for those persons who may this morning just need a little extra prayer this morning. Dear God, we thank you for your people today. We just thank you for every heart, every life, every person that's here this morning, and not only them, not only us, but those persons who are not here, who are we are representing today. Dear God, some of us, we need salvation. We haven't made the decision to give our lives to you, and for those persons, oh God, we pray, oh God, that you would help them. Touch their hearts, oh God. Show them the way, Lord Jesus. Help them. Some of us need healing in our bodies, oh God, and for them, oh God, we pray, oh God, that you would heal every person of every disease, oh God. But not only of the disease itself, oh God, we pray, oh God, of any, any residual impact that you would bring them into submission as well, oh Lord God. We pray for our senior saints today, oh God, that you would just provide strength for them, oh God. Continue to keep them, O oh Lord God. Continue to provide for them, O oh Lord God. Continue to be with them, O oh Lord, protecting them. We pray for our young people, O oh God. Continue, O oh God, to show them the way, O oh Lord God. Be with them, O oh God, in their lives. 
Show them your pathway, O oh Lord God. Thank you again, Almighty God. Thank you for Bethel. Continue to bless us, O oh Lord God. Continue to guide us and be with us, O oh God, in this transitory period. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. So let's, let's stand as we sing our closing song. Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Come on. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. We are born of his spirit and washed in it. to him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his exceeding great throne to the only wise God be glory majesty dominion and power both now and forevermore and the people of God say amen Join us for the following auxiliary meetings via Zoom. Bible study every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Girls Brigade every Friday at 4 p.m. Prayer meeting every Saturday at 7 a.m. Men's Fellowship every second and fourth Saturday at 6 p.m. And tune in to 107.9 FM every Saturday at 10 a.m. for Bethel Speaks to the Nation. Special prayers are requested for Sister Bernice Ballard, Sister Kenya Keery, Brother Bruce Delancey, Sister Charlene Lightborn, Sister Constance Mackey, Sister Ruth Miller, and Sister Alva Rule. As we assemble together week after week, we are constantly mindful and prayerful for the sick and shut-in of this nation and of this church. Prayers are requested for Edward Fitzgerald, Dorothy Hanna, Sheila Hepburn, Jenny Hensey, Sally Hutchinson, Barbara Jones,
Constance Mackey, Sylvia Munnings, Marjorie Murphy, Charlene Neely, Antoinette Pinder, Shamula Pinder, Carmetta Ramming, Francis Richards, Maxine Roll, Sarah Roll, Sydney Stirrup, Notlin Simmons, Isabel Strawn, Murda Sweeting, Jennifer Util Roll, Carly Wilson, Lillian Wilson, Marie Winters, and Antoinette Wiley. Know that we love you, we are thinking of you, and we are praying without ceasing for you. Happy anniversary greetings are extended to Brother Savian and Sister Brooke Brown as they celebrate eight years of marriage. May God continue to strengthen your union. Warm birthday greetings are extended to Corral Dames, Michelle Lisa Baffel, Theresa McQuay, Janae Celestine, Marina Dames, Lalique Ferguson, Lyndon Harrison Jr., Miss B. Smith, Shinari Bow, and my beloved mother, Sister Dorothea Thompson. May God continue to richly bless and strengthen you all. Enjoy your day. Baptismal or Christian discipleship classes will begin on Tuesday, March 1st at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. If you are interested in becoming a member of Bethel and would like to be baptized, or if you have come on your Christian experience to join the church, or you have just given your life to Christ and may not be sure what to do next, please call Rev. Pat Bethel at 323-5000 to sign up for classes. There will be a meeting for all church members on Monday, February 28th at 6 p.m., at which time important matters will be discussed. All members are expected to attend. If you are interested in receiving the latest announcements from the church, updates, and links from different ministries, Please save the church's WhatsApp number, 323-5000, and send a message to the same number indicating that you would like to be added to the church's group, and you will begin receiving updated information. Congratulations are extended to Sister Danielle Brown on receiving the Michael Fielder Scholarship from KPMG. Daniel is pursuing a Bachelor's of Science degree in accounting with a minor in Spanish at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte. We are so proud of you, Danielle. Keep up the great work. The opening of the annual Baptist Power and Praise Revival of the Baptist Convention will be held on Sunday, February 27th at Bethel Baptist Church at 6.30 p.m. All are invited to attend. We invite you to join us this Sunday at our 7.45 a.m. or 11 o'clock a.m. worship service. If you are unable to join us in person, please tune in to our live stream at www historicbethelbaptist.org or on Facebook at Historic Bethel Baptist. For more information, please contact the church's office at 323-5000.